Roatan Deep, a presentation of Pollock Lab. This video documents a submersible dive to 200 feet off Half Moon Bay on the northwest side of the island of Roatan, Honduras, in the Caribbean Sea. We start on the dock of the home of Carl Stanley, founder of the Roatan Institute of Deep Sea Exploration and captain of the submersible Idabel. Here, Captain Stanley prepares the Idabel for our dive, while April, my co-passenger, looks on. Like me, April had seen the advertisements for these submarine dives and was willing to pay for this unusual experience. I have been a marine biologist for nearly 30 years, but this will be my first submersible dive. I am thrilled to have this opportunity to observe the deep sea environment directly and to see for myself the gradient of animals and plants in the mesophotic zone, which will come at the end of our dive as we ascend above 425 feet or 130 meters. Captain Carl begins flooding the ballast tanks while still at the dock in preparation for our short cruise out to the edge of the undersea cliff off the coast of Half Moon Bay. We can see the shallow spur and groove reef beneath us, despite the very poor visibility after an intense rainstorm that day. Having motored the Idabel only a short distance offshore, Captain Carl floods the ballast tanks to begin our rapid descent. Very soon, it is totally dark around us, save for the sub's lights. Soon we reach our maximum depth of 2,000 feet or 610 meters. Now Captain Carl moves the sub towards the cliff to begin our much slower ascent. Our first view is of the basalt rocks at the base of the island along with coral sand from the coral reefs above. The rocks are surprisingly bare. At this depth, the most spectacular inhabitant is the echinoderm Novodinia antilensis, which looks a lot like the smaller golden crinoids scattered on the same rocks. But Novodinia is actually a sea star or asteroid that has convergently evolved to resemble a crinoid. I'm particularly interested in the sponges and I notice that the sponge fauna this deep is entirely dominated by glass sponges like this one.
These white serpent stars writhe in the branches of a gorgonian coral. Both are filter feeders. Here is a brightly colored sea toad, also known as the pink frogmouth. More beautiful glass sponges belonging to the class Hexactinellida. By now we have climbed nearly three quarters of the way up the cliff and the rocks are still mostly bare. Quite abruptly, at about 500 feet or 150 meters, we see some new animals including these amazing stalked crinoids, also called sea lilies. And to my amazement, the first shallow water fish we see on our ascent is the invasive lionfish. The ability of lionfish to thrive at these depths ensures that this Indo-Pacific transplant will remain firmly established on Caribbean reefs. We've reached 425 feet or 130 meters, the deepest part of the lower mesophotic zone considered the deepest depth that light will penetrate and suddenly we begin to see pink and red splashes on the rock surfaces that indicate the presence of encrusting red algae. Captain Carl takes us right over the dive gear of an unfortunate suicide named Bugsy who was despondent over his girlfriend leaving him. Some 30 years later, the upside down tank, black buoyancy jacket, and tank gauge are all still intact with very little growing on them. We continue our ascent, seeing more shallow water fishes, such as these jacks, yet the rocks remain surprisingly bare. Still in the lower mesophotic, we can now see the faint glow of daylight above. We begin to see more and more fishing line draped across the rock surfaces. These monofilament lines are now permanent additions to the seascape. And here at 330 feet or 100 meters, we see the in the bottom frame our first giant barrel sponge, Zesta spongia muta. At this depth, the sponge is white instead of reddish brown coloration that we see in shallow water from the photosynthetic bacteria that live in the surface tissues of this sponge. Finally, as we approach 275 feet or 87 meters, we begin to see some of the larger sponge species that are more abundant on shallower reefs, such as these Aplicina and Agalus species. Again, these sponges appear lighter in color than they do on shallow reefs, and also grow in a thinner, more spindly form.
For scale, a fist-sized white thorny oyster can be seen in the center of this frame. Note that the cavities in the rocks appear to be bare. The number of purple basslet fishes increases as we ascend. Having reached another light threshold, green algae appear, and at the same depth, as we approach 200 feet or 61 meters, the abundance of sponges increases notably. Now within the depth of deep scuba diving, the bottom and the colors of the benthic animals begin to look more familiar with increasing abundance and size of seaweeds and sponges and the first plate forming hard corals. It is interesting that the abundance and size of the sponges appears to track the cover of seaweeds, with both increasing at the same depth. Captain Carl gradually turns the sublights off so we can get a sense of the natural light levels at these depths. As he does, reds and oranges disappear.
Now at 150 feet or 46 meters, sponge abundance further increases with higher abundances of hydroids, gorgonians, and shelf-forming hard corals, similar to reefs, at half this depth. At this point, our ascent is more rapid, and we're soon at the surface again, and Captain Carl begins maneuvering the Idabel back to the dock. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this submersible trip to 2,000 feet.